everyone, welcome back. This is the Beginner's Guide to Sewing, Episode 7. I'm Sarah from Sewing Parts Online, and we are going to learn all about elastic today. So let's go ahead and jump in and learn all the different varieties. There are many different widths and types of elastic, each with their own pros and cons. So let's go over a few. This is braided elastic. It's very lightweight. You'll notice that this elastic becomes more narrow when it's stretched. It's really only good for lightweight fabric or for areas that won't experience much stretch as over time it will lose its elasticity. Braid for like cuffs. This should only be used in elastic casings or channels as the stretch is entirely lost when sewing directly on fabric. This is knitted elastic. It's very soft and has more movement. It's also very versatile. It can be used in casings or sewn directly on fabric. Because it's so soft, it's great for direct contact with skin, and it's great for medium and lightweight fabric. This is woven elastic. This stuff is really strong, but not as soft as knitted elastic. It's especially great for heavy fabric as it is so strong, and it can be sewn directly on fabric or used in casings. This type of elastic can be made to be very wide and very thick. Again, it's really great for those medium weight and heavy fabrics. By the way, this little non-roll label simply means it won't roll on itself when it's in a casing. This is elastic thread. This stuff is awesome. It really has a ton of uses, but it's especially awesome for shearing fabric. It's done by using the elastic thread in the bobbin and sewing 15 to 20 parallel lines. This is clear elastic. It's very thin and durable and can be stretched up to four times its size. These are of course great for dance wear and swim wear as it looks better and has less bulk and weight to it. This is also very beneficial to use in shoulder seams or really any seam that risks losing its elasticity and stability like you see with t-shirts. Now this is like a fashion knit elastic. These things are becoming really popular and come in a variety of prints and colors and widths. They're meant to be seen and are adorable for skirts. They make an even thinner variety for like baby diaper covers and cloth diapers. So when sewing on elastic, make sure you've got a ballpoint needle and that you're set up to use a stretch or zigzag stitch. The rule of thumb as far as length is concerned is to measure the area for which you need the elastic and cut two inches shorter. So if your waist is 30 inches, cut 28 inches. There are many different ways to attach elastic. The three most common methods are by sewing directly on the fabric, creating a casing, or creating a tunnel slash channel. The trick to sewing directly on fabric is to pin the elastic in intervals so that the elastic as a whole is applied evenly. For instance, if I were sewing along a straight edge, I would pin the elastic in the middle of the fabric and at the ends of the fabric. By gently pulling on the end while holding the elastic and the fabric from behind the pressure foot, I can evenly distribute the elastic. If I were sewing a circular garment like a waistband, I would start by sewing the elastic ends together like this. Remember to backstitch multiple times. Then I would pin the elastic at four evenly spaced points. Again, I'm stretching the fabric and the elastic to fit from one point to the next so it is evenly distributed. You don't want one side to have more gather than the other. Creating a casing is my favorite method and it's very similar to creating a hem. First, you need to either finish the raw edge or turn it under a quarter of an inch and press. Then determine how wide you need the casing by adding a quarter of an inch to your elastic width. Measure from the distance of your finished or turned under edge, fold and iron. Now sew it down as close to the edge as you can. You'll be passing the elastic through either one of these openings. If you have a circular project like a skirt, 
you'll have to leave an opening large enough to pass the elastic through like this. Using a safety pin, thread the elastic through the casing. So that you don't risk losing the elastic tail in the fabric, make sure to bunch up the fabric to keep the elastic tail visible at all times. When you reach the end, both tails can be sewn in place. When sewing a circular casing, leave the one tail exposed. You can ensure it doesn't get pulled into the casing by attaching it to the fabric with like a safety pin or just a regular old pin. Now pull the elastic through until it comes back out of the same opening it went into. Either butt the edges up and sew to connect the two elastic pieces or overlap the two ends and sew a box shape. Now you can sew that opening closed. A tunnel slash channel is very similar to a casing, but is created with a completely separate piece of fabric or some kind of tape like this folded binding tape. Channels are great for inserting elastic into the middle of a garment, like to cinch the waist of a dress or waist of a romper. You simply place the wrong side of the binding or the fabric on the wrong side of your garment fabric and sew down along the sides. If you're doing a circular channel, you'll have to connect the two ends of the tape slash fabric channel before you insert the elastic. Now repeat the same steps as we did with the circular casing. Remember to leave an opening, thread your elastic through the channel with a safety pin, sew the elastic together, and close the opening. Now that you know all about elastic, go out there, sew some skirts and shorts, and have yourself a good time. It's so easy and so much fun. And if you have any questions, we're always here. Visit us on SewingPartsOnline.com or Facebook, Facebook.com slash SewingPartsOnline, or on Twitter at SewingParts, Instagram, Google+, we're everywhere. And be sure to subscribe by hitting that button below for next week's sewing video.